Okay, welcome back to the Bright Channel. Welcome to another video. I'm here today with Abby. Now, I've been on a project in Sichuan. Um, we're in Chengdu at the moment. And during that, that time, um, we visited some minority villages. And I found out something really interesting um, during that time, that Abby is a minority here in China, is yes, that right? Yes, I'm so a what, Hui ethnic minority people. You're a Hui minority people, Hui, right? Hui. Yes, okay. Yes. And, um, but you didn't grow up in a, in a village, did you? No. So where I, did you grow up? I grew up in Tianjin, that's a one of the four municipalities in China, so yeah. it's a big city. It's quite near Beijing, right? Yeah, yeah. It's okay. uh, only half, a, half an hour by train. Oh, yeah, right, from, from Beijing. Beijing. So I'm a city girl. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so are you a minority through your your grandparents, were they? Yes. Yeah, so it's, yes. it's ancestral. Like basically everyone in my family is minority. Okay. And th there's another thing. You're not only a minority, but you're also a Muslim minority. Is that right? Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, so th this is the sort of area that I'm interested in because a okay. lot of people in the West mm -hmm. think that um, the Chinese authorities treat Muslims bad or they're trying to get rid of them and i just want to kind of explore that a bit with you to see if you think that is actually the case or you think that's that just... is absolutely not a case really yes yeah. so grew up in china i'm never afraid or scared to say i'm a muslim uh -huh. and i am quite proud to say that that's good i mean growing up i mean since elementary school uh -huh. since kindergarten actually Every school, kindergarten, we have a uh, halal restaurant. Really? Yes. And wow. every one of them. So when I was in kindergarten, elementary school, middle school, high school, college, they all have halal restaurants. And what about, are you a practicing Muslim? It's for me, because I'm from a big city, so mm -hmm. it's more like a uh, dietary habit, so eating okay. habit. So you don't eat pork at all? No, not at all. <clears throat> okay. And... At, at those sort of schools and colleges, um, there are obviously other Muslims there, which you, you befriended, I guess, yeah? yeah? yeah. Um, what about if they were practicing Muslims and they need to pray? Do some of those places have a, a, an area where they, you can go to pray? Uh, not in school. Okay. Not in school, but um, uh, there are many mosques in the okay. cities. Uh, I mean, in Beijing, of course. And then in Tianjin as well. So you have a mosque that you can attend? We have many mosques. Really? Yes. Not, uh, they not haven't been knocked down, right? No, of course not. They haven't not. been closed down? No, no. And you don't have a problem going there to, to pray if you want no, to? No, not at all. Really? Not at okay. all. Okay. Yeah. So again, this is a, a big misconception of the West. Um, in fact, I, I, I believe there are more mosques in China than, than any other country in the world, I believe. Yes, yeah. yes. So that's that's uh, really And actually, I... I did a video about the halal, halal food hunting tour in Beijing. Okay. So right in the middle of Beijing, um, very close to you know the city center, Tiananmen Square, the Forbidden mm -hmm. City, there's a uh, street uh, called Ark Street, Niujie. So that place has, the majority of people living there are Muslims. Uh -huh. So along the streets there are halal restaurants, halal snacks, halal foods, food stores everywhere. And um, it has the uh, biggest mosque in Beijing, wow. just on that street. So it's pretty to the city center. And there's also, you know, the Isla Islamic Institute uh -huh. also on that street. So oh, in, wow. the, in the center of Beijing. Okay. Because I spent a, a, a few years in Guangzhou and there's a large Muslim community in, in Guangzhou. And again, another sort of misconception that I think is in the West. They seem to think that all the Muslims in China are in uh, Xinjiang. And again, that's not the case, is it? That's I mean, not the case. We're in Sichuan and yes. we were out at a hot pot restaurant yeah. tonight. And what were there? There were a lot of Muslim people there, yes, right? Yes, actually today is the Eid, ah, right? That's why they were and, celebrating it. And right? uh, it's a Friday. You know, Friday is the big day in a week for mm -hmm. Muslim people. And usually Muslim people go pray in mosques on Fridays. Uh -huh. So that's why there are a lot of people waiting uh, to go in at a hot pot store. It is so full. Um, everybody's, everybody's there celebrating. 
and we say we see we saw a lot of people you know wearing those yeah uh, the, the muslim we even yeah. saw a small girl didn't we in traditional yeah, yeah, muslim yeah. dress yes and i i i noticed nobody really sort of is staring or no, anything we're not, like we're that, not yeah. like we're not hiding anything yeah. and i mean seriously growing up i'm quite proud to say i'm a muslim and yeah, all of my good. students and um, all of my uh um, classmates, my friends, uh -huh. they respected my um, habit, uh, our custom, uh -huh. and when we go out to eat, uh, they will never order pork and when we eat together. Because they're aware. Yeah. Yes. You know, there are 55 ethnic minority uh, groups uh -huh. in China and a lot of them are Muslim. It's not just Uyghur people. Sure. There are Hui ethnic minority and also Hasa Ke. Uh -huh. uh, that's a Chinese name, I think minority. Um, I believe there's more, but I can uh, I, I can think of right, right now. I mean, I, yeah. You know, I I think it's um, unbelievable how a lot of Westerners think that that China are trying to get rid of minorities and Muslims. I mean, we we've been um, this week to see a number of of minority villages, and they're thriving, aren't they? And, yes. And the government has done a lot for them. Mm -hmm. from a, a view of, of poverty mm -hmm. alleviation. And I saw the same when we were in uh, Taiwan as well. Um, we, we saw the Zhuang minority yeah. there. And again, there's lots of schemes that were set up to help them. In fact, that was really interesting because there was one, they were weaving a cloth mm -hmm. and they'd actually, um, one of their customers was Herms and they buy the cloth to, to using their products and they were really proud to, to yeah, sort of tell yeah. us about that but it was all woven in the traditional way and the Chinese government had actually provided a lot of help for them to set up a centre mm -hmm. and, and, and we saw was that a government thing that we saw where we saw that those minority shoes they were making. Oh, yeah. And I asked about buying them, and they mm. says, no, we're like an organization that just buys them from the villagers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that a government sort of set up thing? No, <laughs> no, it's not. It's the villagers helping villager, villagers themselves. Okay. So apparently that woman was a businessman. He, she knows how to run businesses. Okay. And the other the other uh, ladies from the village, would, they, they all know because they all know how to do the embroidery. To sew in. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So uh, this lady, so she sets up this company and help to, uh, she collects those items from the uh, villagers. Uh -huh. And some of them, they she, she kept it for, you know, for just um, collection. Okay. And for show, because there's on the third floor, it's more like a museum yeah, thing, that's right? right? Yeah. And if they have extra, they will so sell, sell it online and also like to, to the tourists. Okay. So they can earn money together. Yeah. And I mean, lift, I've, lift I've everyone been... everyone out of poverty. Uh -huh. I've, I've been quite shocked. I mean, I, I'm aware that the, the government do do a lot of poverty alleviation stuff here. But it's not a, a, until the last sort of few months where I've been to see it myself that I, I'm pretty impressed with how mm -hmm. much they've done. You know, I've, I, we went to one village and, and their income has like gone up 20 times in the last sort of five to seven years, you know, yeah. and that, that's really a lot, you know, yes. it's uh, yes. quite good. But just getting back to the, um, the uh, core thing. So you, as a practicing Muslim or a, a sort of semi-practicing Muslim yeah. where you, you follow some of the rules and yeah, that. Yeah. And, and can I ask, do you have a Quran in your house? It's not been banned in China, right? No, it's not. Actually, <laughs> um, in my grandparents' house, uh, her alarm is a Quran. Oh, really? Yeah. So every morning, if I set the alarm like to seven, now when I, when I went to school when I was young, and... 7 a.m. the Quran will start oh, right. singing in our, in our <laughs> room, so it's pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you do your um, uh, grandparents speak Arabic at all? Uh, I don't. You I, don't. I, I don't. I don't understand, but um, they understand a little bit, mm -hmm. just a little bit. And again, that's yeah. something else that that's. But we we do every in every Muslim's. Uh, house, uh -huh. we have those scriptures hand uh -huh. uh, in our room, in our in our house. Okay. Yeah, and also uh, you you will see a, a little plate thing mm -hmm. hanging on uh, the top of the door. Yeah, that's. And there's no problem to, to no display problem, them. No, no problem. And one other thing I noticed um, since we've been going around is all like the signs in these um, ethnic areas. They're not just in Chinese, they're, they're in the ethnic language. Yes. And a lot of them are in English yes. as well, aren't they? Yes, yes. Actually, 
we went to you know the villages are quite small here yeah, yeah. and it's pretty remote mm -hmm. and i see all of the uh, all of their signs are written in uh, four languages so wow. chinese english korean and japanese wow all of the signs here God, that's yeah, amazing. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. And and because, again, that's another thing that the West level, you know, the, the Chinese are trying to make everybody speak Putonghua, which is the Mandarin Chinese. Now, no. that is true that they want everybody to speak that. Of but course. But not because over and above to... their local language. Yes. Yeah. And I think it's interesting when they, they, they try to, to push this about uh, Xinjiang because they if you look at, there's a lot of people in Shanghai who speak Shanghainese, but they're also learning Mandarin. Yeah. People in Guangdong speak Cantonese, but they're learning Mandarin. Yes, so yes. it's only the same thing in, in well, Xinjiang. Well, you know, uh, I've been to Tibet uh -huh. last year. I went to Tibet, I visited a Tibetan school there. Just one second. She has been to Tibet and there's a lot of great videos on her channel. I'll leave the link in the description. <laughs> so go and check them out. Thank you. <laughs> So yeah, I visited a, a Tibetan school and uh, they actually have Tibetan language class. Uh -huh. Yeah, so they are teaching their own dialects, their own language. It's as not well as Mandarin. Yes, yeah. as well as English. Because uh -huh. so, they, they, they want the whole country to be able to speak Mandarin simply so different parts of China can communicate yes, better with course, each other. Yes, of course. I mean, it's one country, <laughs> so you have to be able to communicate with each other. Of course. And also, there's a, I, I don't know if you've noticed that, uh, in some I think minority region um, there are signs like for Tibetan people there are uh, Tibetan language sign uh -huh. and then Mandarin underneath, Mandarin, yeah, underneath. So, and there's a rule locally not just in Tibet but other people uh, in China as well like Guangxi uh -huh. or uh, Xinjiang. Yeah because Guangxi is a big um, yes. area for minorities yes. isn't yes. it? Yeah. And also Yunnan and Guizhou those uh -huh. are the uh, major uh, minority regions in China. So in those places they have th those uh, local rules that you have to put the uh, minority language above the, the Mandarin Chinese. sign. Wow. Yeah. So I didn't know that so that's and, something really interesting. And yeah. uh, what interested me uh, recently was that I just got my ID renewed, uh -huh. you know, our Shenzhen Zhong, our ID yeah, card, yeah. right? <laughs> so um, mine just, uh, the old one expired on uh, May the 4th, so I just got uh, my new one. Uh -huh. uh, when I went to the uh, police station to renew it, I saw there's a, you know, a poster uh -huh. sign, like some instructions to renew your, your ID. And it actually listed that in minority regions, uh, the ID card, will be shown in two different languages. Oh, right. So yeah. your, your own language and, and Mandarin. The, uh, yes. Wow. Yeah. And I also, something else, if you look on the on Chinese money, I know we don't use that much anymore, but actually there's there's three or four different scripts mm -hmm. and languages on, yes. on Chinese money, yes. isn't there? And that, yes. that's, uh, yeah, that's interesting. So before we wrap this up, I just want to ask you one other thing. As a minority, you actually have in the past and still have some kind of privileges over and above Han people, don't you? Tell me a little bit about yes. those. Uh, I think the uh, most well-known one is during the college entrance examination. Mm -hmm. Examination That's a really, really big thing in China. Mm -hmm. uh, What's that called again? Is it the Gaokao? Gaokao. Yeah. Gaokao, college entrance exam. Uh -huh. And that's yeah. really important, isn't That's it? really important. That's like... The biggest thing you know from since you were a six-year uh, yeah. child to until you're eighteen. For that, yeah. yeah. Um, so we have um, extra scores. We can uh -huh. have extra if, if you are a uh, minority. minority. Yeah. And actually, so for Han, me from Tianjin, sorry. from uh, from Tianjin, or you're from Beijing, so big cities, I I can get uh, a extra five five points five points yeah. and is it the case that some minorities can get ten yes okay yes. If and, that, and that actually upsets some hand people doesn't it some yeah. hand people are not happy with that are they uh, n no but but most people that just accept it <laughs> yeah because you know i mean the totals the total score would be over about 700. Mm -hmm. I mean, different places have different sure. scores for Beijing and Tianjin. So it's not a big 
it's not that big, big amount, but, but if you really need bit. it, it really helps. Helps you. Yeah, and, yeah. And then the other thing was that in the era of the one child policy, yeah, that didn't have, apply to minorities, did it? But you don't have any, do you, right? I don't. I don't. <laughs> my parents just love me. <laughs> just me is enough. But but I think minorities <laughs> can have up to two. I mean, now we don't, uh, the one-child policy has already been... Yeah, uh, sure, it's lapsed, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah, yeah yes. Yeah, it's, it's but uh, when I when I was young, when we still practiced uh, mm -hmm. one-child policy, minority families can have two children. Two yeah, children, yeah. wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's great. Thank you for taking the time to come and um, speak to me today about Thank it. Thank you for having I think, me. I think it's important that we try and get the West to understand a little yes. bit more about China. Yes. You know, it's yes. kind of frustrating that they have all these sort of preconceived ideas. And it's really interesting to speak to, mm -hmm. to you, who's, who's not just a um, minority person, mm -hmm. but also you're Muslim. So you've got sort of both I'm things going I'm really, on really there. glad that you brought it up because mm -hmm. really, I mean, uh, growing up here more than 20 years, I've never, in China, I've, I've never been you know, afraid or scared uh -huh. to tell anybody that I'm a Muslim. That's really uh, on good. the opposite, I'm I'm quite proud to say that. And when people hear it, they will not be, you know, um, surprised or they want to stay away from you. They they sure. feel like, oh, um, I. I, yeah, that's, yeah. He, she's a minority and uh, I want to res respect her. Yeah. Uh, well, even know, the you, place we, we went to hot pot yeah. today was in Halal. Yeah. Uh, hot pot place, yeah. which you were really I was so happy. happy. <laughs> I was so yeah. happy because, you know, um, we usually believe that the northern, northern China has more Muslims mm -hmm. than in the south. South, yeah. Yeah, so I was really surprised to see there's a Halal hot pot Sichuan style hot pot restaurant here in Chengdu because you know in Beijing uh, there are a lot of halal restaurants halal uh, hot pot restaurants of course but mm -hmm. they're all northern style there's no sure. southern style, style. Oh. halal restaurant but here I was like I really want to try hot pot Sichuan style uh -huh. but they don't have enough Muslims here they don't have so many Muslims that as as in Beijing yeah, right to, but to. but I was searching on um Dianping, Dajong Dianping, that's like a um, uh, food restaurant app. Yes, yeah. yes. So the first thing came out on, on the first it's not the first result, but it's on the same uh, first page. Uh -huh. There's a halal hot pot uh Sichuan style restaurant. I was so happy so to see gonna that. Go there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's great. Well as I say, hopefully that has give you a little bit more understanding to both minorities and uh, religion here in China and uh, if you did like that video give it a thumbs up I will put the links to Abby's channel down below please go and check it out because some of her Tibet videos are really good thank you and as always for now take, take care, care.